Hi, Dr. Kevin Windish again from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine here to talk to you today about the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Remember that these video blogs are not in any way intended to replace a consultation with your physician. If you have concerns, please call your doctor and schedule an appointment to be seen. Here in our office, we would be happy to see you even as a new patient same day. Our office phone number is 359-7111. So what is the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act? How does this apply to your children? Well, if your child is doing well academically, it doesn't. But if your child is having difficulties, this is some stuff that's important to know. In 1972, the federal government passed a law uh, that was rather complicated, but and has been reenacted multiple times, but the final form of the law, the modern form of the law, is known as the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. And what this act says is that children with known disabilities that impair their academic learning must be provided free and appropriate education in the least restrictive environment possible. Now there's a couple of major caveats to this. Number one, it must be free. And I have seen school districts here in Nevada try repeatedly to convince parents that, well, if you want these special services, that's fine, but you'll have to pay an extra tax for them. That is incorrect. That is not the way the federal law is written. Number two, it must be appropriate. So to deny services to your child would be a very significant issue, and that is also a violation of the Individuals with Disabilities Educational Act. And finally, it must be in the least restrictive environment possible. What does that mean? Least restrictive environment possible means that they must put your child in as much of a mainstream type of class as humanly possible. And again, I see this from time to time when the school districts get frustrated, when they don't want to provide services, they'll tell the parents something to the effect of, that's fine, we'll put your child in the homebound program. Well, there are children who need to be in a homebound program. They can't go to school, they have no functioning immune system, they're receiving chemotherapy, they have end-stage AIDS, and those children definitely are homebound. But for everybody else, they should be included in the school district's program. Who, which children does this law apply to? Well, it applies from birth until age 21, although many states break it up a little bit so that children between ages birth and three years of age actually receive services outside of the school district. That's the way it's done in California using a group called Regional Centers. Here in Nevada, it's a group called Nevada Early Intervention Specialty Clinics. Between three and 21 years of age is handled through the school district in California. Between 3 and 18 is handled through the school districts here in Nevada. And then a group called Sierra Regional picks up between 18 and 21. That's mandated by law. When the parents present to the school after age 3, if they demand in writing, make a letter, sign it, date it, put your child's name on it, request that the child be evaluated for a individualized educational plan, IEP. The school then has 30 working days to complete that. I've seen schools do things like say, well, we no longer do IEPs, or we do a tiered evaluation process, and we won't evaluate you for an IEP until our special team has watched Johnny for several months in school. None of that is accurate. That's all in violation of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA. They must evaluate Johnny, your child, within 30 days and then prepare a written plan for you. At that point in time, you have the right to line item veto of the plan. We will provide speech therapy for your child 30 minutes a day. We will provide occupational therapy 20 minutes once a week. We will provide classroom accommodation with seating. We will place Johnny in a homebound program. You have the right to, re to uh, refuse that last line if that's something you so choose. The next question comes up, okay, well that's great, now I know my rights. What happens if the school refuses to follow my rights? Well, the next step is to request what's called a due process hearing, which is essentially a writ of habeas corpus. It is the same legal process that is in place if, for example, say a registered voter shows up to vote at the polls and is told, you can't vote here because of the color of your skin. We don't want your type voting in this state. You would then petition the courts for a writ of habeas corpus, and the government would have to explain in court why your civil rights were denied. It is a similar process to what happens when we pick up a patient 
who is a danger to themselves threatening to commit suicide, and uh, we can hold them for a very short period of time without their permission, at which point in time, again, the hospital holding that patient must, in front of a judge, explain why they wish to deny that patient their civil rights. Well, because the individual patient said if he goes home, he's going to murder his wife and children, that he's got a shotgun in his car and he will use it, and that it's already loaded. The judge may decide that patient's a danger to others and choose to keep them in the psychiatric facility. Well, this is the same hearing. You say, well, I can't afford a lawyer. The beauty of a due process hearing is this. The state has to provide you with a lawyer. They have to pay all of the court costs. They have to pay for their own lawyer. So there is no out-of-pocket cost to you. Each state under federal law is required to have lawyers available at no charge to you, the parent, to provide consultation and, if need be, legal action against the state if they refuse to provide free and appropriate education in the least restrictive environment possible. Here in Nevada, that's a group called Disabilities Advocacy of Northern Nevada. Uh, in New York, there's a group called Rights Law, which has a very excellent website, rightslaw.com, W-R-I-G-H-T-S-L-A-W.com. And other states have similar processes uh, and similar lawyers in place. So realize that these services are free. They are available for children age three and above. You do not need to be school age to receive these services. If your child is speech delayed at age three, the schools can, will, and must provide these services. And they must be in the least restrictive environment possible. For your three-year-old, among other things, that means the school district must provide a mechanism of getting them to and from school in the event that you're not able to deliver your child to school, i.e. a bus, if necessary. I hope this has been helpful for you. I know this is a lot to digest. If you're having academic problems, please contact your physician. Pediatricians are well trained in the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and how that applies to patients. Uh, if you find that your civil rights are being denied, your pediatrician can guide you through that process and put you in touch with a disabilities advocate in your given state. If you have questions here in Nevada, we would be happy to see you. Again, we can get you in same day for a consultation. Our office number is 359-7111. Good luck.